Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if, you have, if you have a friend, I think he said his friend was taking it this semester, so I don't think you really have a full chance to judge the class, but I appreciate the enthusiasm. <laughs> okay, challenges and finding the schedule. Software estimation is the toughest problem in software engineering for all the reasons we've talked about. Particularly going back to armor. Uh, so the more novel your work is, that should be the more, yeah, the more, being, look, the more novel your work is, the harder it is to estimate how long it's gonna take, how much successful invention it's gonna take to finish the project, or whether or not what you're trying to do can actually be done within the requirements of the software. Uh, plus, we all tend to be optimists. <coughs> Uh, Chuck likes to say, and, and this is this is very common, you'll hear these kinds of rules of thumb anyway. As a software engineer, take your first estimate, double it, and add something. Uh, Chuck says double it and add, add one day. So if you think something's going to take, oh, I can do that in five days, it's probably actually going to take you a lot of, you know, it's, it's that, that sort of thing. The challenge is thinking through all the tasks that actually need to be done to finish the project. This is why for software estimation, one of my recommendations is that you actually start from the ship. You say, this is what it needs to be in order for us to, you know, gold master release the ship. And then you say, what needs to be done the week before that or the month before that? What needs to be done the unit of time before that? And work backwards. Because our tendency is we see ourselves, I don't know if I can draw this, we see ourselves starting here, and here's our end goal, and we say, oh, all we really need to do is this, and this, and then we'll do this, and this will do this, and we'll do this, and we'll do this, and that will feed into that, and we'll do this, and that will split into this, and this, and that goes to there, and and we sort of have one of these classic, then a miracle occurs. <laughs> <laughs> right around there, about two thirds of the way through the project. It's kind of, again, it's all just going to fit together and work. <coughs> what actually happens is that in all these tasks here, you are doing what is necessary to demonstrate progress and completion. And meanwhile, what you have, another color here. What you have piling up over here unseen are all these very tough problems that you've deferred. And you start to get to here. And, and, and often, you know, I'm on this path and I've deferred too. I said, well, I can handle those when they're there. And you're on this path and you say, oh, I've got these few. And you're on this path and you've got these. What happens is you get to the end here and you've been sifting flour and suddenly you've got a bunch of walnuts. Uh, you're trying to put walnuts through the sifter, you know, and it's just not working. And, and this, this is why you get the 90-90 rule that we've already talked about, you know. You spend 90% of your time to get to this point, and you spend the same amount of time trying to solve all these problems to get them up with. Uh, I find that if you start with the end and then go through the tedious exercise of working backwards, you actually come up with more realistic stuff and, you, and what you start doing <coughs> course is what you always do if you want to meet a schedule, you start throwing up features. <laughs> you say, oh, well, no, we're not going to get all that done by that date. <coughs> so my recommendation, and this is why I'm stressing the 11, 12, and then the 12, 10 demos. What you really want to do is define these as much as you can. And first you want to say, can I really get from here to here in four weeks? And can I really get from where I am right now? This is what is today? Eighth? This is this is like five weeks. So if you define this and say, what can we actually get done in five weeks? For this. And then, and, and again, this, this, this may be something 
Extremely simple. This is all simple, guys. It's a single semester. You're trying to do some hard stuff here. It's why your code doesn't, I don't grade you on what you actually show here. What I grade you on is you're following the process and how well you know the readings. That pretty much is, you know, your deliverables to <coughs> determine your grade. The code is not a deliverable. But that said, what you need to do is really figure this out and really figure this out. Make sure the difference between those two is just four weeks. And make sure this is something you can do in five weeks, which is where we're getting up to figuring out your schedule. Yes? <laughs> you would have never seen a lot of this black circle because those are like what you discover from like the first 90% of the time, right? Some of them are. Some of them you're simply kicking cans down the road. <coughs> Uh, you're basically saying, well, you know, uh, I can get, I can get to a certain extent. I can mock up my user interface, and I can make a sprite, you know, go across the screen, and so on. Uh, and then it's kind of like, and we'll worry about collision later. Uh, we'll worry about all the different little figure animations later, because once we have a, you know, a, a, you know, static sprite moving across the screen, then we can animate it. And what you do is you go to anime and it's like, oh, this is a lot harder than I thought. Uh, no, you're exactly right. Some of this is unavoidable, which, which is why you always end up taking longer than you expect. But a lot of it is that you pick the easy part. It, it's kind of like, well, you go for all the easy stuff first and you push the hard stuff down. Yeah. And it's natural tendency because what do you want? You want status reports that look good. You want to mark off this task is finished. You want each status report, you know, which is going to go up the chain, saying, "Hey, look, we're getting this done. We can demonstrate this, and we can demonstrate this, and we can demonstrate this." <clears throat> this is not a cure-all. It won't get. There's stuff you are going to find out only along the way. But what this does is this makes you think about what do I need? What can I actually reasonably? have ready by this date, given where I'm starting from. So that's what you're trying to do there. Yes? So is it ever OK, like if you have a lot of different sub-problems that you can solve in parallel, um, to do some of the easier ones first, just so you have something that you the harder ones? Yes. Uh, just be aware the harder ones may be even harder than you think. <laughs> the, uh, uh, and, no, it's, it's, you very much want to do that. And actually, you want to solve whatever you can as fast as you can solve. And if you're in a position where you can assign one or more people to do all the easy stuff, and then one or more people to say, start working on these hard problems, because we're going to need this three months down the road. And you've got three months to get this working. That's, that can be useful. And I've, I've actually done that sort of management, where it's kind of like uh, <laughs> getting back to footnotes. Rick, yes, sir. Rick, great software engineer. I said, Rick, you know, we're going to need footnotes. Uh, and uh, I, I underestimated, and he underestimated just how difficult footnotes were going to be in a live desktop publishing system. Uh, uh, but you know, he basically was broken off, and that's, that's largely what he focused on for several months, was just trying to get footnotes to work properly. And he had to do so in a changing environment, because of course our code base was constantly evolving as we were adding all the other features. So he'd have to go back and say, okay, now we've got to do things differently, but you've got this going on, and this is what's happening, and so on and so forth. Uh, oh, that's just it. <coughs> Challenges include identifying the critical path. What's critical path? <coughs> kind of a list of things that must be done before other things can be done. All the way up to the finish button. Yes. Uh, but more accurately, if we if, if <coughs> erase all my hard problems here, a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. that green. Let's say this is your PERT chart. <coughs> and here's your big finish line here. Okay, your critical path, <coughs> it's basically a, a weighted directed graph here. It's how long is each of these tasks, and 
if they're a certain length, if it's going to take, say, three months to get from there to there, but it's only going to take two months to go along this path, this is, this is more of a critical path. It's the one that determines the overall length of the schedule. So that, <coughs> uh, and, and basically it really is, this, this is basically a directed graph and you have some value here. This is one week, this is two weeks, this is four weeks, this is one week, this is six weeks, this is two weeks, this is one week. So this path, you simply sum up the weeks to here and you say this is uh, 9, 10, 16, 17, 17 weeks to get to this point. Where this is one week, this is three weeks, this is one week, this is four weeks, this is two weeks, this is one week, one week, two weeks. I'm not going to keep adding all these up. But this one, you know, for example, we've got uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is only eight weeks to come to this point here, but it's 15 weeks along this path. Along this path, it's four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this, actually this is a critical path there because that's 18 weeks. Uh, and if this is 1 and this is 1, that's uh, going to be 9, 10, 11, this is 11 here. So this becomes your critical path because this is the longest. It's going to take, by your estimate, it's going to take 18 weeks to go there. If this one suddenly you say this is going to be four weeks and not one week. This is now changed to 20 weeks and this has become the critical path. Yes? And these are nodes, uh, the relationship between them is that the task is to be done. And they depend, the order, the yeah. directiveness is say. Yeah, the directiveness says this, this has to be done, you know, this has to be done before this can be done. And you can have, you know, this, this and this node have to be done before this one can be done. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. <clears throat> uh, challenge is keeping the schedule up to date based on the work actually accomplished. Uh, trust me, projects, they, they create a schedule and then no one updates it for like three months. And then they get close to ship, it's like, oh, guess what? <laughs> this, is, this is completely out of date, so it doesn't re reflect what we're actually at. And schedules tend to make you lean towards a waterfall approach over an agile approach. Uh, so if you're doing task scheduling like this, if you're, if you're trying to do agile or iterative, what you want is something that reflects it, you know. You want, here is our first sprint and we're going to do this, this, well maybe not the first sprint several sprints. Now, each of these are sprints and we're going to get to this point and then here's our next big chunk. This feeds in here and again we've got some splitting and some dependencies and the next big chunk and so on. So feel free to adapt this according to whatever methodology you're using within your team. So PERT chart, PERT stands for Program Evaluation Review Technique, it was developed in the US Navy in the 50s. Like I said, directed graph showing the expected significant task for the project. Each node contains a box or bubble with an estimated duration. <laughs> sometimes the error, sometimes the duration, well, <coughs> some people will put the task in the bubble or box, some will put it on the arrow. Uh, it doesn't really matter, whatever you want to do. And you'll see the diagrams of both. The arrow's coming in, once again, black this frame very well. Usually you have a start node, though you, you can in theory have multiple start nodes. So if it's splitting out, those are tasks that can be in parallel. If it's merging in, those are tasks that both have to be completed before this one can be started. Uh, and 
and so on. Uh, you start with typically start with the start node, ends with the end or finish nodes. The it helps you to identify the task dependencies and the critical path. And as you change the estimated task durations, either because of slippage or better information, you now have a new updated, this is going to, basically the number at the very end <coughs> is going to be, if this is A, B, and C, it's going to be the max. The overall schedule is the max of A, B, and C. Uh, whatever the, the sum is coming up to here. Uh, da, da, da. You can find hundreds of bird chart examples and variations uh, on the internet. You know, Google bird chart. Uh, and you'll find lots of things that will teach you about it. Uh, Lots of different ways of doing it. Here is a typical perk chart. This is one that shows a task and a duration of the bubbles. This one does not show critical path. Uh, but the critical path in this case is the top. 3 plus 9 is 12. So it's going to take 12 days going that way. It's going to take 11 days going that way. It's going to take 10 days going that way. That's a bad example because it doesn't show the critical path that you're going to have to show. Here's one that does show a critical path. It's kind of dim, it's outlined in green. Uh, and this is one where it's showing the duration on each of the edges. Uh, like I said, you're, you're free to do what you want. I don't have a standard template for critical path because, or for a PERT chart, because PERTs require a drawing tool. You have to drag rows and boxes around. And I didn't want to mandate this. Drawing there are a lot of templates out there for various, you know, environments that you can have, uh, and so you know, you're, one of the things you're going to have to do as a team is have somebody very quickly figure out what you want to do for per chart. I do have, I will tell you, I do have two different templates for Gantt charts, which are free to use. If I do something different, that's fine. But there's, there's two that are out there. The link they're on, they're in the. If you go to the main link main wiki page and look at the requirements templates page over in the column and go there you will see two different Gantt templates. Yes? So for your examples here, the tasks are just numbered, but would you like more detail on them? Oh yes, and you can do that. I actually thank you for bringing that. This is a very simple test. If you're going to do something like this, you're going to need a table that actually describes the tasks. And that's not uncommon. Often with per charts, you will you will have a, either just a, a brief ID for the item in the box, uh, and then have a table that describes what you're actually doing. Or, you know, if, if you're using actual boxes or bubbles, something that's more than a circle, you can actually put the name of the task in there. Yes? Do you care if we draw it by hand? Uh, I don't. It's a little harder to change an update as you need to, and you'll have to calculate critical path by hand. Uh, frankly, you could probably use Microsoft Word or its equivalents and just the drawing tools there. Again, I'm sad that Microsoft has sort of let Visio wire wither on the vines, but Visio would be great for this. So, to create your PERT chart, you need to identify the major tasks and key events that will lead to the project completion. In this case, what you want to, you want to have two, two milestones on your chart. One of which is 11, 12, and then so on and so forth. And then the second one of which is 12, 10. So we're going to have two key points in here. One, identify the tasks and the paths to get you to 11, 12, 12, 10. Uh, you have to establish dependencies. Among those tasks, what has to, you know, what can be done in parallel, and what is an actual dependency? A has to be done before B, but A and C can be done in parallel. Uh, so that's simply saying, something like this. Here, 
here's A, here's B, here's C. So this says that A has to be completed before B can be done, but C can be done in parallel with A and B. Then maybe these both feed into B here. So you're going to have to be doing some, some real thought based on your requirements. And this is why you actually want to flesh out your requirements. You now want to flesh out your requirements in terms of what you need to get done in the next five weeks, and then for four weeks after that. You have to agree on first order estimates. Draw up your PERT chart. Please visually indicate your critical path. You know, color, bold, something. So when I look at your chart, I can look at it and say, yes, that's a critical path. And revise this until you're done. Uh, one of the things, by the way, uh, this, is a, this is on the final slide here. Chuck's got a great podcast on scheduling. It's a long one. Uh, it's, it's something well over an hour long. You can count that, and this is, this is not normally, but in this case, because that's so long and because it's important, you can count your time that watching that as billable hours. So if you watch the software scheduling uh, podcast, keep track of your time, and that's just added to your, added to your billable hours. Gantt charts were actually invented by a man named Henry Gantt. Uh, yeah, it's not an acronym. Someone's last name. It was invented over 100 years ago. <clears throat> this uses a two-dimensional layout. You have, going down, you have a list of all the tasks to be completed, and then a horizontal is a timeline. And it, well, we'll see in a second here, shows when it's going to be completed. Uh, and it gives, you, it gives you more of a sense of week by week. It's not as compact as PERT, and it's harder to see what the critical path is. But it's useful knowing. These PERT and Gantt are probably the two major scheduling approaches that you'll run across. There are others. But those are two, two of the major, you know, when you have an organization that actually wants to schedule a project. How many of you have used Microsoft Project? <laughs> not many. You'll, you'll probably run into it. Some of you will at least will run into it. It's pretty much a Gantt chart, uh, is the way it works. So this is, this is one example of a Gantt chart. So what you've got down here are your major tasks. And what you've got here is basically a single timeline that's showing when the tasks start and stop, uh, when you have some specific milestones. This is, identifies three there. <clears throat> now, again, as with PERT charts, there are all sorts of variations on Gantt charts. But, you know, if you don't like the two templates I give you, go find your own. Uh, actually, I think Microsoft Excel has Gantt chart templates built into it. I could be wrong. Uh, here's another, here's a more complex one. And what you see here is what you'll often see, <clears throat> which is, here the task is defined with some sort of identifier. If you pull this out, you'd have better descriptions. You have the duration and start, and it automatically plots, with this particular tool, it automatically plots it out here. Uh, and can trace dependencies between <coughs> tasks. I don't even really want anything this complex. This, this one, frankly, this is fine for me. You know, something, something along these lines. Yes? Yes, you need both. I want you to do both because they, they have two different, two different aspects to them. Yes? So, what is, how do you read the critical path from here from this chart? Is it it's very hard. It, in fact, it, with some Gantt charts, you can't read the critical path. Because, for example, this one doesn't show dependencies. It simply shows estimated start and stop date. Which is why, which is one of the insufficiency with Gantt. The second one here, has this tool has some little arrows here to show dependencies among tasks. Uh, but even there, it's not clear if there's a critical path and so what it is. Yes? If we uh, make a custom, nicely simple Gantt slash per chart combined, would you do that? No, I want two different charts. Okay. <laughs> the, 
So, same data. Uh, you can identify who's responsible for the tasks. Like I said, they're class wiki. Okay, sorry, I don't have the got in there. Uh, like I said, there are templates there. Your PERT and your Gantt charts should, should actually be congruent. <laughs> that is, they should describe as far as possible the same schedule. Uh, you may actually organize the tasks differently when you do it, but they should show you ending up at the same spot at the same date. Uh, and any dependency should match. <coughs> Again, this is a podcast. It says, okay, two hours. Yeah, two hour podcast on project management. That's a long time. Count those billable hours. It's probably one of the more important things you can do this week uh, is to, to spend two hours billable time watching that. Uh, and then figure out as a team how you're going to do this. Uh, I've got a, some more resources here. And again, these slides will be up tonight as well as the video. On this, yes. If we already watched that kind of, if we're like watching videos that correspond to our roles, uh -huh. can we count those as billable as bill hours, and should we retroactively count those? Uh, this one, if, if you already watched the project management thing, go ahead and you know give yourself two billable hours this week for having watch that. Generally speaking, podcasts do not count against billable hours, uh, but this one does. It's, it's so long. Uh, so, you need, as per your question, both a PERC chart and a Gantt chart for your projects. Uh, the, the podcast will describe creating a task table, that's what I was talking about with the uh, PERC chart, having a separate table with the tasks and then just using labels in the PERC chart. Uh, you don't need to. If you want to, if it's useful to you, it may actually be very helpful in creating both the PERC and the Gantt chart. Uh, PERC chart is required, should visually identify critical path, Gantt chart. Uh, should tie somehow to your team members. Again, get this posted by Saturday. We'll look at them next week in class. Uh, and that's it. Any more questions on this?